Blackmagic Design just recently released a new update for their Resolve software, Resolve 16.2. And in this video, I'll be going over 16 different changes they've made to the software, uh, kind of introducing you to what those changes are and kind of demonstrating them. I won't be going into depth really on any of the different features. I'll leave that to some later videos, but this will be a pretty good overview of not all the features, but 16 of the biggest changes they've made. So hopefully you'll find this video useful. Okay, the first big change that they did in Resolve 16.2 was the introduction of the Foley sounds for the Blackmagic Fairlight Sound Library. So you can get them from the support page from blackmagicdesign.com. And you can see they have their support page here. Make sure you're on DaVinci Resolve Fusion and Blackmagic eGPU. Come to the latest downloads. And underneath the two updates to Resolve Studio and just regular Resolve for 16.2, you have the software update here for Blackmagic Fairlight Sound Library 1.0. So click your operating system and download it and install it. Uh, it's going to ask you when you're installing it for uh, a place to install the files to. It's about one and a half gigabytes of files, which is quite a bit, so make sure you have enough room. But then once you have that installed and you fire up Resolve, if you go to your sound library, it might look like, well, now there's nothing here, but they don't by default list them all. You have to do it by search, using the search function. So basically using three stars, three asterisks, one, two, three, that'll list all your different Foley sounds here. Now they come with 515 different ones, and right now that's all I'm showing you, though I do have other sounds in my uh, sound library available for Resolve. But these are all the ones that come with this new update. And if you want to see your other ones, there's a drop-down box up here, drop-down menu, within the sound library, which allows you to choose which uh, basically database you're going to be using. So here, all the Fairlight Sound Library is under one, so that's all you're searching in. If you want to look at some of your other ones, you just need to go to one of your other databases. And here I have another 900 in this one, and you can search through yours and see where, where your different sounds are located. But again, for the Foley, the new Foley Sound Library, it's under Fairlight Sound Library and it's 515 entries. So that is the first and probably the biggest change uh, within Resolve. They've, they've been promising it for about a year, so it took about almost a year to get it actually, uh, so you could actually install it within Resolve. So that is the first major change. The second change they made in the new update to DaVinci Resolve, uh, Resolve 16.2, was the ability to create a compound clip from uh, in and out points. So normally, if you want to create a compound clip, you could right click on a clip come up here and click new compound clip. You can also do it from the menu up top here. They've added a new way that if you wanted to create a compound clip of just a section of your video, you can hit, start to hit an in point, hit an out point. And if you right click on that, you now have the ability down here to convert the in and out to a compound clip. And you give it a name, click create, and that puts it into your media pool here and then you could add that to your timeline here and put it under video two so this little section right here where the in and out point i created was is now a compound clip and you can use that just like any other compound clip and that way you can create a compound clip without having to convert your original footage so that is the second change in the new version of resolve resolve 16.2 the third change in Resolve 16.2 has to do with the transitions, and they've added a transition uh, dialog box for changing the length of it. So if you have your transition here and you right click on it, they've added change transition duration. And here you can change it to uh, whatever you want it to be. You can, so right now it's at one second. So I could change it to say just like 12 frames and that shrinks it down. Now you can also do it by dragging it or coming up to the inspector. That's just, just a new way they've added. And of course you have to have the right uh, handle length on either side of your clip to extend it. So you can only go so far without then having to change how much your clips overlap so you can get the good transition. 
But that is the third change in Resolve 16.2 is the addition of a change duration dialog box for transitions. Fourth change in Resolve 16.2 is an addition of another kind of template, a fusion template for Resolve. They already had the title templates or fusion titles here, which had built in ones and you could also then create and add your own. But now they've added also fusion generators and they're available under the generators subfolder of the toolbox. And the built-in one is called noise gradient. So I'll just drag and drop that onto the timeline. And you have all your different controls for it here under the inspector. So you can modify it as you need, increase the detail. And basically what it is is a fast noise from the fusion tab. Now you could actually go into it and modify it from within fusion and this is something new they've added by right clicking on it and now open in fusion page and that'll open that fusion generator and allow you to modify it so right now you have basically this is just a fast noise node renamed a noise gradient and you can hover over it to see that and then you can modify it here all you want you can also add nodes to it if you want so if you want to modify it slightly more and you can also create your own which I did right here. I just basically modified the noise gradient, added a mosaic blur from within the effects library of Resolve. And I'll drag that up to the timeline here and show that. And just basically adds a mosaic tile sort of to the noise gradient. And if you want to see how I made that, I can right click on it, go into open infusion page. And you see now it's basically a macro and I have different settings here available. I'll have to do a separate video on how to create these kind of templates. That'll be in a separate video. But that is the fourth new feature in Resolve 16.2 is the addition of fusion generator templates. The fifth change in Resolve 16.2 is along the same vein as the previous change I mentioned. They added a new kind of template, which is under video transitions, and this has been requested for a long time and is gonna be very useful. And that's the ability to make your own transitions and actually add them in the same way as the built-in ones, and they're calling them fusion transitions. So they have three built-in right here. So you add them right between your clips, just like you would with any of the other built-in video transitions. So I'll take this cross dissolve, or the noise dissolve, click and drag it, and I drag it right onto the clip here in between the two clips and now you can come up here to the inspector and you can change its settings here and you can also change its length drag it out or shorten it and you do that both from here and from the inspector play it through here and you can see the transition works just like the other transitions and again you can modify these and also make your own which again I'll, I'll put in a separate video where I demonstrate how to create your own fusion transitions. But to modify it, you just right click on it, open in fusion page, and then that opens the transition in the fusion page. And you can modify any of these nodes or any of the settings here, just like you would in anything else. And here you can see the two different clips. One, the first one will be median one, and the second clip that you're transitioning to will be median two. And you can add your other nodes and customize them as much as you want and also save them out, uh, just kind of like the same way you did the fusion titles. You could do that with both the uh, fusion generators and the fusion transitions. But again, I'll show that in another video, how to create your own fusion transitions. But that is the fifth new feature they've added to Resolve 16.2. The sixth change they made in Resolve 16.2 is ability to change the how you view the duration. So by default here in previous versions, it was just basically time code for the duration of, the, of your clip or your entire timeline. But now you can right click on it and choose frames if you like. So you can see the number of frames, how long it is, which is different from the current time code. This is just the overall duration of your, again here it's the timeline. And right click and then you can choose if you want to do the hours, minutes, seconds, and frames. Now that's kind of a small change, but for some people, I'm sure they're gonna find that useful. So that was the sixth change they made in Resolve 16.2. The seventh change they made in Resolve 16.2 was in a new way to create duplicate timelines. 
Now they had changed it in 15 to you can only select the timeline or your, a clip on your timeline. Make sure that this was this section was highlighted, your timeline. Then you come up to edit and then you could choose duplicate timeline. And here you see it's changed now, it says duplicate current timeline. And the other way to do it would be to click on t the timeline in the media pool and go up to edit and it would just have uh, basically duplicate clip. But now they have it duplicate timeline from within the media pool, which is nice. But you can also right click on the timeline in the media pool now and click duplicate timeline and it will create that copy for you, duplicate it. So that's just another nice way to have a right click context menu option to duplicate your timeline. So that was the seventh change they made in Resolve 16.2. The eighth change they made in Resolve 16.2 was the ability to reveal the location in your media pool of a clip in your smart bin and a smart bin. So right here I have one smart bin open here. So I'll right click on this clip here and come down here and you'll see find in media pool. So if I click on that, that'll take me over to my media pool and show me where that clip is located. So that's a quick and subtle change, but I'm sure a lot of people find that useful. So that is the eighth change in Resolve 16.2 was the ability to locate files or clips in your media pool from a smart bin. The ninth change in Resolve 16.2 was the ability to have a tooltip in the color page for a second input coming in from the Fusion page. So right here I have a media in coming into a media out. And if you go over to the color page, that would be your first input. And then within the color page, you could also add a second input, second source. And on the Fusion page, you could have a second media out. And this will go to that second source as the input. I'll show that here. So this is your second source. And you get that by right clicking and clicking Add Source. But now they've added tooltip labels so you can know which one is which. So if I hover over this first one here, I'll say media out one. And over the second one, it says media app two. So I know where from the Fusion tab uh, this input is coming. So that is the ninth change they've made in Resolve 16.2. The tenth change they made in Resolve 16.2 is in the color tab. And it's the ability to highlight where your qualifier is and see that in the scopes. So I'll show you here how to enable that. Come to the three dots menu here under your scopes and make sure you have display qualifier focus checked. Then you come over here to the qualifier. As you move along, you see on the right, bottom right there, on the scopes, you see three little circles in each of the color channels, which basically shows you what part of the scope uh, your qualifier is currently on. So that could be handy to get a kind of feel for how your qualifier pick is gonna affect your selection. So that is the tenth change they made in Resolve 16.2. Okay, the eleventh change they've made in Resolve 16.2 is in the Fairlight tab. And if you go over to Fairlight FX, you'll see a new FX here called Meter. So if you drag that over to a clip, that pops up from a meter. So then if you start playing it, you can see your levels here. And that way you can have a floating meter that you can move around your screen if you want. But that is the 11th change they made in Resolve 16.2. The 12th change they made in Resolve 16.2 is also on the Fairlight tab, and that's the addition of an LFE filter. Now this is only available if you're mixing 5.1, so if you just have a stereo audio, uh, it's not gonna be really applicable to you. But if you are mixing 5.1, uh, it basically allows you to roll off higher frequencies when you're mixing 5.1. So if that's part of your workflow, uh, this will be a handy addition. But that is the 12th change they've added to the new version of DaVinci Resolve 16.2. The 13th change they made in Resolve 16.2 is also on the Fairlight tab, and it's the ability to alt or option drag and create a duplicate copy of a audio clip. So right here, I'm gonna click on this, hold down the alt key, and then left click and drag, and then that brings a copy down of my audio one and let go. So now I have a duplicate of my audio one clip 
uh, in my our YouTube channel here. So that was the 13th change they made in Resolve 16.2 in the Fairlight tab. The 14th change they made in Resolve 16.2 is the ability to copy and paste clips between timelines from within Fairlight. So I have one timeline open, so I could select this clip here, copy it, and then come up here and switch to timeline two, my second timeline. Then I can right click and paste that clip onto this timeline. So it's pretty straightforward. I kind of play with it to get a handle on how to uh, best use it. But that is the 14th change they made in Resolve 16.2. The 15th change they made in Resolve 16.2 is also on the Fairlight tab, and that is the ability to bounce individual clips to separate files. So if you have a clip here in your Fairlight tab, right click on it, and you come up here, you'll see Bounce Clip to Files. So if you click on that, you can choose what folder you want to put. You can add a tag to it. You can give it a name. Uh, right now, by default, it's just going to use the clip name. And you can also, since this was a uh, stereo, I could have it do bounce to multiple mono files. Or I could do one multi-channel file if I want. And choose the bit depth. And then just click bounce. And that will output that as, as either, again, uh, multiple mono files or one single stereo file. But that is a nice addition to Fairlight to be able to do that on the clip level and not just on the track level. So that is the 15th change they've made in Resolve 16.2. Okay, the 16th change they've made in Resolve 16.2, which is the last one I'm going to highlight in this video, is the ability to change a user preference, which allows you to edit on frame boundaries or subframe. So right here I have a clip here. And if I move it around, I can do subframe. This is the end of one frame in the beginning. So I can move it anywhere here and edit anywhere along. Go back to the beginning here, but under Preferences, go Preferences, under the User tab here, and under Editing, at the very bottom, you'll see a Align Audio Edits to Frame Boundaries checkbox here. So if you check that and click Save, now it won't let you do subframe and always snap back to the uh, frame boundaries. So here I come past this one, I'll go to this frame, and I go forward again, and I'll go to this frame. So let's just go into DaVinci Resolve Preferences, and going to user editing and at the very bottom here check or uncheck this preference and then that can change it between doing be able to do subframe or have it go on the boundaries for the frames so hopefully you found this list of changes in resolve 16.2 useful i didn't go over every change that they made but i did try to highlight all the major ones and for some of them i'll be making separate videos including the ones for the fusion generators and fusion transitions to better go over and more fully go over uh, capabilities of making your own and editing the ones that are already there. But I hope you found this video useful and I thank you for watching.